Yep, uh, where while she sleeps, uh, I'm Loz and I do lead vocals. I'm Matt, I play guitar and do a bit of vocals. play and tour music constantly. You have your high days that are great, your low days that aren't so great. What keeps you going every day while you're on these long tours? Sigs and booze. <laughs> it really, Sigs and it booze. unfortunately is. I wish it weren't. Like, there's, we have, I, I, I'm trying to eat special K in the morning at the moment, <laughs> and as many avocados as I can. <laughs> but apart from that, it really, is, it really is just mainly, you just get drunk. As soon as, you've, as soon as you've played, you're allowed to get, it, regardless of how hungover you were, it means you can have a beer after you've played, doesn't it? You play, you sweat it, sweat it out, and then get back on it. Aside from the, the beers and the, the smokes, though, it mainly is the people that want to see our band play on, on something like this. Like, yeah. day to day, there's, there's going to be a few people at least that know the band that want to see it, and for me, that's enough to go out there and do it. To play and tour constantly, you, you must have a love for music. Where did your love for music begin? I don't know. My, my, my parents are kind of hippies in a way. Like my dad was always into music when I was a kid, and I think it's just natural progression. Like I got that off him, listening to like rock bands or whatever, and Pink Floyd and stuff like that. And then and I just developed my own interest, obviously. Like the new metal genre came out just when I was finishing school, so bands like Slipknot and Limp Bizkit were huge. And from there, I, I just, it just sort of rolled out for me. And as soon as I was 16, I was like, just trying to put together garage bands and stuff like that. And, and it's always been there for me, I think. So it was kind of a natural thing for me to just want to do that. I think for me, my, my dad taught me how to play guitar. And I must have just decided to show an interest in wanting to learn. He taught me like, a couple of things. And I'm like, I was like probably 10. And I've been, just since then, I've just been into I'm always, the It's the only thing that I've actually just wanted to do and, and stuck with, just like music in a band. And, so I've always been like, ever soon as I saw what bands were, I was just like, that's, that's kind of what I want to do. <laughs> you know what, I mean? what do your parents do for an occupation, and did that lend to any funny or unique stories growing up or in your childhood? I, um, I've got a funny story about when, uh, when I joined While She Sleeps, they, they, asked, they asked me to join, and uh, I was helping out at a school, working at the same school, because my mum's my, my mom a teacher. And uh, I'd been working there a few months, and then I've known these, I've known the rest of the lads for a while, and, and I was like, they've asked me to join, so I'm going to leave. And I just, I just sort of upped and left, and left her working at the school. <laughs> he picked up on his last day, and he got him his shirt on, and ripped his shirt off, and we're like, now let it go on the motorway, and it's like, let's do this. Because shit. we all like quit our jobs <laughs> like a few years ago, and we're like, if we want to do this, we need to fucking. It needs to be everything going out of jail. I mean, not just so like we all just not quit. a part time thing. We all just quit working and lived out of a van. Our magazine has done a lot of work with the homeless in Los Angeles. It's a big problem here, and I know it's a big problem where you guys are from. Have you had any experiences with the homeless? We've got a thing that we always, uh, we always try and do, and it's like, we, every time we see someone who is homeless, we try and give them a shirt or a jumper or something like that. It's give kinda, them some, uh, we've got a box full of clothes, you know what I mean? And if they, they, yeah, you know, we always do our bit for that. We try every time we, we bump into someone, we try and have a nice chat to them and ask them if they're all right, they need anything. If so I've got something to give, I'll always give. You know I mean, I like I like the idea of trying to help as much as possible, and that's why like we met this dude in Australia once, and he was outside the show. Like Sam, our drummer, just got chatting to him, and he was living on the streets, and and we were just like, Yo, do you want to you want to help load out? Like he was like, Can I do anything? We we're like, Yeah, you can load out us if you want. That's all we're doing. So he loaded out us, and I think someone gave him like ten dollars, and we gave him a uh, gave him a jumper because it was Australian winter at the time. And we, people say now that he's, he still wears it. This is like a year ago in Australia. There's some people I know from there who say, I still see him and he's wearing a <laughs> sleeps tee. I'm like, so cool. See, that, that's free advertising. Yeah. And you're helping somebody out yeah. through a winter. That's pretty rad. Like that's that awesome. Idea. Every band needs to do that. Yeah, I like that idea. It's cool. Our magazine, when we were working with the homeless on Skid Row, we found a lot of homeless claim Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They're at their lowest point of life but they're always saying, God bless you, or I believe in Jesus, check it out, but they're homeless. What is your perception of Jesus? I mean, I'd, I'm not really a strong believer in, in, in Christianity. 
Um, but just just on a personal level, it doesn't really. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not I mean, against it, but it's not for me. But I think that sometimes some people just need something to turn to and a bit of hope. And if that comes from, well, whatever that comes from for the individual person, then that's fine. That's fine by me. At the same time, you know, like if you if you're quite low and you've got nothing, then it's yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing like, for people to lean to because it does give you like strife for, for, for like hope and to do well and like do better and stuff like that, which is which is awesome. But I just. Personally, I don't like the idea of needing to like believe in something or like like bow to it in a way. Do you know what I mean? I like just the idea of just being your own master, like rather than looking up to one and living for any specific reasons. I'd rather I think you should live for yourself. Do you know what I mean? But that you couldn't say that to someone who's been living on the streets and isn't hasn't got anything going on and anything positive going on. So it is. I people think it is. Help, a, man. Like, that's what keeps a lot of people going. It's something that this useful in that situation, I think, like religion. In the last two years in the United States, we've seen a lot of tragedy with hurricanes and tornadoes. Have you guys dealt with any personal tragedy in your lives or helped out or rebuild from a tragedy? Like, you, you can, people have like tragedies at home and to do with their families and stuff like that, but not, we've never had anything big scale like that everyone's involved with it's always just been like so I mean when families struggle or like we used to live in a, in a house and my dad's company wall fell through like last year and that was like a family tragedy he had to start again and he's like that's a tragedy he was looking though. to retire and he, and he didn't get to retire he had to start a new business at like 60. Yeah because it involved the band heavily like we had a practice space that was called The Barn and it was just Matt had been practicing and playing in bands and partying in there since you were like 12 years old or something like that, you know. He like stood behind our band really well, so it affected us. Like. What are three records every kid needs to own? Slipknot Records. I think that's a must. It's got to be self-titled in my opinion. Yeah. I'm going to go with Rancid, Elk on the Wolves. It's a perfect record for me. Uh, Sights and Sounds, Monolith, I think that's a, a record that should Great be listened record. to and isn't necessarily listened to much. And maybe like it's price, the illusion of safety or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. We'll agree on that then five. <laughs> yeah. Ever. Well thank you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.